Good morning, Ebenezer. We warmly welcome each of you to our worship service and all those joining us by social media. By extension, if there are any visitors, any visitors with us this morning, kindly acknowledge yourselves by standing or by merely a show of hands. Do we have any visitors with us this morning? Well, it's good to be here worshiping with you, our Ebenezer family. And so we welcome you and we pray that you will be enriched and uplifted in service this morning. I am your worship leader, Michelle Ryan. Ms. Giovanna Knowles will bring you the message. The theme of the service is from worry to worship. As we gather today, let's lay down our worries, empty ourselves, and open our hearts. In Matthew 6, verse 34, Jesus encourages us, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Our brief notices are as follows. During this time of mourning and reflection, we extend our heartfelt condolences to the family of Florence Carey, and let us continue to pray for the bereaved families of Helen Johnson and Sidney Carroll, the brother-in-law of Merrily Rose, and the uncle of Gia Knowles. Additionally, we ask you to keep in your prayers the sick and shut-in members. Next Sunday, November 3rd, 2024, the Women's Fellowship celebrates its 50th anniversary in the morning service. We like you to keep them in prayers as, an in as they are an integral part of our church's ministry and development. The BCMC Central Council will be held November 14th through the 16th at St. Michael's. And there's also going to be a special walkathon which will be held on November 17th at Queens College. Sponsor sheets are available at the church office and we encourage you to participate and also try to get donations to assist with the conference. A harvest auction and salad supper will be held on November 18th at 6.30 p.m. Tickets are available from Jesse, and we encourage you that to obtain your tickets as soon as possible. It, and, and additionally, they are requesting for the Harvest Sunday products that will be fitting for a Harvest Thanksgiving service. So if you have any products that you wish to contribute, please see Jesse or you can bring them during that Saturday. I think, you, are you gonna be dealing with that on Saturday? afternoon when the church is being uh, decorated. Morning. Thank you. Birthday greetings are extended to Debbie Walker on the 31st, Carmen Vargas and Nelson Jr. on the 1st and to all those who celebrate their birthdays during this ensuing week. Let us sing birthday greetings to them. As we prepare now to speak of God's presence, God's greatness, and sing of God's goodness, we remember that all our life 
God has been faithful. And all our life, God has been so, so good. So let us get ready to encounter God in a powerful way as we stand to begin with our responsive call to worship. Let us stand. But rejoice in the Lord and be glad when his glory is revealed. When I fall, I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. Let your minds on things that are above. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Our opening hymn is inserted on, in your bulletin on the sheet of victory in Jesus, my savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood.
victory in Jesus. Yes, indeed. Let us affirm our faith now as we say the Apostle Creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of Jesus and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered unto the Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died in his spirit. He ascended into Hades. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of saints, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we invoke God's presence into our midst, we will sing the prayer chorus as the dear panted for the water, my soul longed after thee. And Brother Percy Sands will lead us in the pastoral prayer. As the dear. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Father, we know that you are the one that gives us life. You're the one that provides for us day by day. And this morning, as we've gathered in this place for worship, 
for praise, for celebration. We are so thankful. We ask that you open our minds to the truth that will be revealed today, giving joy, giving happiness. Realizing, dear God, that there are many of our number who aren't with us today, knowing that there are those who are sick and laid aside. We ask that you touch them. Touch them at their point of need, bring in relief, bring in hope, bring in health, bring in healing. Realizing too that there are those that mourn, in particular the family of Sister Florence Carey and any others that might not be known to, to me. We pray, dear God, that you will bring them the comfort that is needed at the time of loss. You know the desires of our hearts. And while we come here on Sundays to worship, there is another week before we gather again. And we ask that you lead us through the week. Not letting our minds wander to the things of this world, but allowing you to permeate our lives so that our thoughts and our desires might be given by you when we open our lives to you. You will indeed impart to us those things that are required of we who claim to know you as Lord and Savior. We pray now, dear God, that you will so empower Sister Gia as she brings your word this morning. May we all be challenged in a way that we leave this place determined to be your follower, your disciple in the world in which you've placed us not knowing the time that we have, but knowing that you've given us this time today to be a blessing to others. So dear God, may your will be done in our lives as we go forth in your name. For we pray in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
word of God also reminds us, remind us that we should suffer the little children to come unto thee and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. We, Ms. Mr. Carrie Campbell now comes to read our first scripture reading taken from Acts 16, verse 23 to 26. Good morning. The first scripture reading is taken from Acts chapter 16, verse, verse 23 through 26. And when they had laid many stri stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Who, who having received such a charge, Thus thrust them to the inner prison, and made their feet fast in the stalks. And at midnight, Paul and, S S Paul and Silas prayed, and, and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's bands were loosed. Thank you. Amen. Our offertory hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. During the singing of this hymn, the offertory the offering will be received and the offertory prayer will be given by Sister Ashley Humes. Hymn number 422. Let us pray. 
Merciful Father, we offer these gifts with joy and thanksgiving. What you have given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love, receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our second scripture reading will be read now by Sister Carolee Williams, following which we will have a moment to give thanks. Sister Carolee. pleasant good morning church the second scripture lesson comes from Joshua chapter 6 reading verses 2 to 5 and then 20 to 21 and the Lord said unto Joshua see I have given unto thy hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor and ye shall come past the city all ye men of war and go round about the city once thus shalt thou do six days and seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day ye shall come past the city seven times. The priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat. And the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Now in verse 20. So the people shouted with the priests, blew with the trumpets, and it came to pass. When the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down, fell flat, so that the people went into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, and ox and sheep and ass, with the edge of the sword. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. So right now, we have a time of giving thanks. And when we say praise, witness, we're the witness. We have, uh, it will be us. So it's something that we do in Children's Chapel. Every time we have it, we ask a person to just say what it is they're thankful for, something that might be outstanding in your week or something generally. And so we just want to show you how this is done. We have a few of our young people from Chapel who is going to share that with you. So come up here if you're a part of that. And let's just start with sharing with everybody something that we are giving thanks to God for as we be a witness to the great things he does. I thank the Lord for waking me up every morning and putting food on my table for me to eat and clothes on my back from when I have to go. Amen. I thank you, Lord, for waking me up this morning for families and education. I thank God for allowing me to walk on my school walkathon even though I had a bad knee. <laughs> I want to thank the Lord for allowing me and my family to celebrate my grandmother's and my father's birthdays this year. I thank the Lord for giving me a family to care for. I thank the Lord for giving me the talent that I use to give back to him, which is music. I thank the Lord for my parents. Amen. Let's just clap for them, they are so amazing. <laughs> now, of course, we don't want to just limit it to those in Children's Chapel. Anybody wants to say what they thank God for today, feel free. I'll bring the mic or you can shout it out. 
another year of life and, and a new saxophone. Hey! <laughs> Anyone else? Any more? We have some coming. Our girls especially know what I always like to say. I thank God uh, because we're beautiful with a capital B, right? Hey. I'm thankful for my handsome nephew. She's thankful for a handsome nephew. <laughs> ah. If there's any more, let me know. like you and me our clothes are drawn and ties made clear that not for God shall be so here's my hand my friend my pal my heart you fill with cheer let's make it day a time like this throughout the little long year. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. One more. I want to thank God for my new job. One more. One more. Mm -hmm. Thank the Lord for our barber. Thank the Lord for your barber. Yes, you look wonderful for church. <laughs> and you know what's so amazing about this? Look at the many things we could thank God for. Life. We have one more. I thank God I could jog. <laughs> I could really say I thank God for life because nine years ago, I was not meant to be here. I was attacked, I was assaulted. Um, I was pregnant with my second to my last child and I, I flatlined three times. And the doctor said to me when I came to, he said, I don't know who you pray to or who've been praying for you, but you were gone three times. But when we looked in that waiting room, we saw your kids and they're crying. We couldn't, we couldn't give up. So I am so thankful for that all the time. I'm so thankful for the amazing people who he has placed in my life. And you know who you are because you're right in the same sanctuary. I thank you. I love you. We appreciate you all. Thank you so much. Amen. I 
retired guard from my aunt Louise Bosfield with being in hospital. She's 104, and she come out last week, Tuesday, but she's doing much better. And she's starting to talk, and she's eating much, much more better than when she was in the hospital. So please, pray for my aunt for me, please. Of course, of course. amen. Um, I thank God for the life that my grandfather had. He lived a good life and he'll be greatly missed. Hardest Pinder. Amen. Thank you. Let's just give the Lord a oh, one more. Amen. One more? Okay, no problem. Yeah, this might work out for the day. Mm -hmm. I thank God for your mother. <laughs> oh, amen. Thank you. I thank God for her too. <laughs> amen. Amen. We thank God for all of you this morning and for your acknowledgement of his thanks and praise, because we know that without him, nothing is impossible. He said all things, we, all things are, impos are possible. So we ask you to continue to trust God, for God will lead you, guide you, and protect you. When even in times where we know, or whenever we aren't thinking that he is with us. So remember, God is always with us. And so I thank you all again. And at this time, I would be remiss if I didn't thank all of you who have so ably, ably participated in this service. And we've had just a wonderful blessing. We have started off with a, a great blessing, singing our victory in Jesus. And we know that Jesus is here with us this morning. So we must continue to give thanks. And I thank all of you, who, like I said, Miss Ashley Humes, Carrie Williams, little Carrie Campbell, Mr. Percy Sands, and those who will be coming to sing with us later in the service. So as we give God thanks, as, as we prepare now to receive God's word, we pray that our hearts and minds be ready to receive what God has to say to his people as we solemnly sing the inserted hymns of praise. This is the day, seek ye first, Lord prepare me. And the next voice is that of your messenger, Chia Knowles. Let us stand now as we sing these hymns of faith. Sing them to the glory and honor of God.
Just before Gia comes to deliver the message, the choir, the ensemble, the youth ensemble will bless our hearts in song. Oh, it all to 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you that we can be here together in your name. It's so great to be in your house and just worship together. Father God, today as we talk about from worry to worship, just put us in that mind of worship as we've been so far. Continue it that way, Father God, and touch us in a special way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So the topic, from worry to worship. Let me start by saying this. Worrying about things can take a lot out of us. <laughs> and with so much going on, it can be very easy to worry. But one of the keys to dealing with worry is to turn it into worship. However, with our minds racing from here to there, some of us find it difficult to get into a space of worship. But it's something that we need to do. In fact, God requires that we do it. Just an example of how it just gets difficult. Ever notice when you're feeling worried, you get a little discouraged, frustrated, and you get so emotional, sometimes we could get numb. So numb that it's difficult to talk, difficult to think, and you don't know how to pray or what to say. All of this comes with worry, to slow down the worship, but we have to fight through these feelings. Worry comes to do that. So what is the purpose of getting into this space of worship? Like, what's the benefit of turning worry into worship? I want to answer these from more of a spiritual aspect. And to do so, we will take a look at how God wants us to respond to worry and why. To start, let us briefly look at the two Bible stories that would have caused great worry with many of us if we were in those situations. So earlier, Mr. Kyrie Campbell read some of the verses from Acts chapter 16. Here is a general idea just for a review of the passage. Paul and Silas were on a mission spreading the good news of God in many cities. The people who did not like this ensured that they were severely beaten, thrown into prison, feet locked down, and they were carefully guarded by the jailer. At about midnight while in prison, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Then suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. Now let us take a look at what Miss Carrie Lee Williams read in Joshua chapter 16. It says, it explains that God gave Joshua instructions for him and his armed men. He told them to march around the city once for six days, and on the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. At the sound of the trumpet blowing a long blast, the whole army was instructed to give a loud shout. They did this, and then the wall of Jericho city collapsed. Let's keep in mind that Jericho was a key city for the Israelites to conquer if they were to possess Canaan. Canaan was God's promised land for the people. So with the walls being down, the Israelites were now able to enter the city to get what God was promising. In the midst of both of these heavy situations, parties took part in praying, singing of hymns, playing the trumpets, giving a loud shout, and being obedient to God, which are all elements of worship. The fact that God instructed or supported the worship and the Holy Spirit responded by performing miracles tells us there is a connection between our worship and our breakthrough. And it confirms that God is pleased when we worship. Psalms 55, 22 says, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. Philippians 4, 6 says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. God wants us to live knowing that we are sure about what he can do because he wants to help us. I believe that God feels rather hurt when we live as though we don't have a father whose power is greater than our problems. And some of us are suffering for no reason because we take on things and won't allow God to deal with them. No parent wants
want to see their child hurt. So imagine how God feels when we don't get him engaged with what we're going through. Well, to further explain this concept of worry to worship, I want to share a light-hearted story. Nothing too serious, get a little laugh. But in everything, there's God. So one day, about nine weeks ago, Asari and I were seated inside of my car to go and buy some food. While I was reversing out of the driveway at home, I saw this thing crawling. And I was hoping that the corner of my eye was playing tricks on me. But sure enough, it was this big, ugly spider crawling over to the upper part of the passenger door. That's on my child's side. I don't know why he was going for her. If you don't like spiders, raise your hand. Does seem like too many people like spiders. I don't. But okay, not too much as seem not to like them. I don't. Anyways, Asari and I jumped out of the car on the driver's side. And, as I was, and I was screaming my voice off. Well, my mother came out to make sure we were okay. And boy, did she look disappointed to know I made all of that noise for a spider. I don't think that's fair because if she saw a frog, anyway, we ain't gonna talk about it, right? Well, anyways, I refused to go in the car unless that spider was out of there. So to help me out, my mother took a look in the car, didn't see the spider, and even came back with a broom to pull, tug, and smash because I wouldn't be quiet and still no sign of him. At this point, I was really worried because what this meant was the spider was hiding and could come out and get me at any time. So after making calls, my friends came by to find the spider, but still no sign. They drenched the car with big on and promised me I could feel safe heading out later because there's no way he could survive. Of course, I didn't believe this because if there's no proof of his life, this body, it meant that he could still be anywhere in this car. Okay, so I was worried. Well, Asari and I had no choice but to head out to do important errands. And during the drive, I was bouncing for every little thing that could graze my skin. Well, when we left the mall, and I opened the back door on the driver's side so I could rest his things on the back seat. Whose lifeless body should be posed up between the hinge and crease area of the door? The door right behind me. I was face to face with the spider. You all notice he was coming on my side. It was personal. This was, he was trying to get me, but okay. Being face to face with it, I jumped and I followed. In happiness and in terror, someone in the parking lot got very angry when they rushed over and realized it was for a spider. They, they walk off upset, I can tell you. In the process of this commotion, I bucked my big toe. And the toenail pulled up and back and ripped. Ooh, I was upset. Well, I immediately called Biggie's Auto Detailing Spa, owned by Mr. Philip Cooper, member of this church, young adult, who helps with youth group. I called him and made an appointment to have my car cleaned right away, which included moving the body of the spider. And he did a great job. That day I cried out to God and I said to him, God, I thank you for answering my prayer, which was to allow me to see that the spider was really gone, just to calm my nerve. But why it always got to be drama? I was already worried and anxious about so many other things that life had to get petty and throw in the spider. Costing me extra money and time, broke up my rest, disturbed my friends, Caused me to delay, be delayed, stressed me out, and now I buck my toe. But to be honest, I was highly upset and worried more about this toenail because this was the nail I was trying to repair for five years since it kept growing with a split, no matter how much I tried to fix it, and now it was in worse condition. Well, as I looked at my little nail every day, I saw this little nail coming in by the end of the first week. As small as the growth, the growth was, I saw that there was no split, which was a shocker because usually the little growth would already have a split. No matter how low we take this, no matter what we did, it would always grow with a split. There was no split. Immediately, the Lord spoke to me and advised me to share this message, as small as this toenail was. He said, Gio, your toenail represents the fact that 
in the midst of all your worry, frustration, and everything that you believe to be going wrong, there was healing and new growth taking place. Worship me because you know that I will help you to grow and learn from challenges and I will grant healing and restoration where you are broken. He then said, Gio, the nail being broken, torn, and seemingly worse than before was nothing for you to worry about because those conditions were perfect for what I needed to do. See, in order to facilitate the new growth, healing, change, and more blessings, certain things need to be uprooted and pulled away out of your life to make accommodations. So worshiping me, even when things are falling apart, means that you know that I will uproot to build back up. The Lord further said to me, that toenail is a small part of the body, which many may see as less value compared to other parts. But God wants us to know that he values everything about his children, no matter the size. He'll also fix things that we least expect. He said that the areas of your life that you may overlook, see as small or not as pressing as others, are sometimes the very parts that need to be fixed because they are the root, the start, or the keys to dealing with the bigger concerns. And so they carry value. The Lord said, worship me at all times because I am the one who will deal with every area of your life, even the ones that you did not pray for. Just for worshiping me, my Holy Spirit will move into places that you don't even think about. The Lord then said, always remember to turn your worry into worship because the nail you've been trying to fix for five years, I fixed it in a moment. All things are possible through me, and your, wor your worship is on the basis of who I am. I am the Lord that does all things. I can do all things. I was then reminded that a few days before the spider and the nail incident, I was in serious prayer about some matters. God explained that many times we get into serious worship. It's the very time that everything seems to go wrong, right? Like everything comes crashing down, giving the impression that Satan is getting somewhere. However, he said, don't forget that when Paul and Silas worship, the earthquake came, shook up the prison foundation, chains were broken and people set free. Don't forget when Joshua and the army worshiped me by following my instructions, circling the wall, playing the trumpets and shouting out to me, the walls came tumbling down. The act of your worship touches my Holy Spirit. And the crashing down is not always something bad or Satan getting anywhere. It may very well be me breaking up the place just to take down the heavy, evil altars, walls and foundations that have been placed in the way of my children getting what I've promised. He said, when I am doing my work, I can't always tone it down. It's not gonna always be quiet. So if the rumbling is too loud and makes you feel afraid, then turn up the volume on your worship so you ain't gotta notice or hear what's happening. You just let me do my work. The Lord said, just focus on my greatness and my love for you. Don't worry about the noise in the market. The Lord said, you didn't like that spider or the pain now, did you? But be thankful for it anyways. I will use the things you do not like, the things that hurt, and even your enemies to provoke you to push to be where I need you to be. Everything will be used for my glory. And that spider came right there and ended up as part of my plan to repair your toe. Jokes on the spider, not you. So even when you don't like something or situations, Worship me anyways because you know that all things will have to submit to my word. Now, look, today, nine weeks later, the nail is fully grown with no split. This is what happens when we leave things to God. And I've been looking at my toe like this is a miracle because five years and now we have a nice toe. I could floss my shoes without feeling funny now, my um, sandals, okay? But in conclusion, the Lord is saying to us, 
Do not allow our worry to override our worship because the things we worry about ain't got nothing on what God can do. If we focus on God, we will manifest and see the positive growth and changes that take place when we grow, when we go through certain situations. Our worship is because we love God for who he is and we recognize what he can do. Our worship lets the Lord know that we want to engage the power and works of his Holy Spirit. And it creates an environment for him to move so mightily that the earth will shake, walls will fall, doors will fly open, chains will come loose, and Satan will have to move out of the way and stop blocking us from what God has for us. Satan knows the power of worship, and this is why he tries to distract or stop us. He'll give us anything, emotional problems, physical problems, issues with people, delay us. Listen, we could talk about the amount of things that happen before this church service start. All choir members almost didn't make it. Um, us and our worship leader almost didn't make it. A hard time on the road, but let me tell you, nothing will stop worship. And of course, our testimony even says that today, on the way here. Satan will give you any distraction. And then he wants us to believe that it's him making all the noise. But he is a liar. We will not allow Satan to take away our worship, no matter how bad it gets. Let us continue to turn our worry into worship. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you that we were able to be here today and worship in your name. We thank you, Lord, that we can live a lifestyle of worship because it goes on what we do in here. It's the way that we live, the way that we love. Satan tries to take away every element of things that worship you. He wants to alter our attitudes, our, our outlook on life, to distract us from doing what is right by you, which is still, and, and all of those things boil down to worship you and we can love and we can enjoy life and focus on what you do. But Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit that moves in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus Christ, where we will have light in every dark situation, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that you will tear up, remove, and uproot anything that does not belong in our lives so that we can have freedom freedom and everything that you have promised us, Father God. Anything that stands in the way, we cast them down right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And as we do that, we continue to worship. And we know, Lord, that when we pray and worship, things will happen to make us believe you are not working. But we will not give that credit to the enemy. Yes, there will be things falling because of what the devil may throw at us in warfare. But we know that the real tumbling is you. You moving strongholds out of the way so that we can have freedom, oh God. So we will continue to worship you because we put all of our trust in you. We put all of our problems, all of our cares, everything in your hands right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. At this time, we want to lead into prayer time. And we just want to do something slightly different. I wanted to open up the floor for general congregation to come up and pray, but after speaking to one or two of our youth, we know that most of our old, older, those, you know, over 15, 16, would most likely come up to pray. We had some youth who said that they would be fine with coming up to do spontaneous prayers, about two or three of them. And this is what we want to encourage, because it can be a little difficult, a shy feeling when you're young and you come up to do spontaneous prayers. They don't always feel as though it's perfect. So let us encourage, those young persons who have no issue, just saying a prayer from the heart at this time of prayer. If there's any more other than those, these two, um, come up now, and if not, that's fine. Let us pray. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for bringing us here today. I pray. I pray that everybody would be safe going back home today. I pray that everybody would have something to eat. I pray that we do good in school, even though we are midterm. I pray that we study, and I pray that we 
be able to get through, get through whatever we're going through. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, I pray for bringing me to church today and for giving me a lesson at church. And I pray, I pray that everybody go home safely. And I also pray for us, um, for my parents, my family, and teachers, for giving me lessons and that I can learn to learn in life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. And the second part of this, before we get ready to end, whatever role you are in or area you are in, I'm sorry. Please do. Please forgive me. We have two more ready to pray. I did not see. This is great. Lord, we come to you today. We ask for forgiveness for our sins and we repent for everything that we have done. Lord, we come as humble servants and we ask you to cover us in your blood and guide us. And dear God, we pray that no evil shall prosper in our lives and that any troubles that we face, we can go through with no issue and with a strong head, dear God. Lord, we also pray that if anyone is going through anything right now, you just can heal them or help them see the way to find peace in their heart. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Lord, we come to you to thank you for bringing us here today. Um, it is great that we get to come together and worship you, Lord. We thank you for everything that you are doing in our lives and for healing every and for healing everybody and helping everybody through anything that they're going through. Please continue to help anybody, especially those who are grieving the loss of any loved ones. Um, Lord, please continue working in our lives and we. And helping all of the youth in school, even though we are, as Alex said, even though we are in midterm, please allow us to continue doing well in school. Amen. 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 The Lord is pleased when we can do this. And thank you. And the last part is wherever you are, in your roles or in your area, however you want to huddle, circle, or whatever, just pick one person in your role or in your area to pray for that role or for that grouping. So if I go over here, between us, they may vote Ashley to pray just for all. So let us just take about three minutes to orchestrate a prayer within our groups as we care for one another. We can do that now. Sorry, so wherever you are, you can pray quietly with that group, just, just about two minutes. We thank God for those time, that time of prayer. Thank you, everyone. And now we'll move forward with the end. We thank you, Jesus. 
Maria for those, that most powerful message. And as we continue to sing, I pray that your hearts will be continued, your hearts will be ignited through the joy, from the joy of our singing, from the praise and worship. And we pray that as we leave this sanctuary, the God that we serve today will be the God that will continue to protect and guide us. As we sing our closing hymn, O Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. And we will sing verses 1 through 3. O Jesus, I have promised, verse 526. Let us join in the mission statement to worship God, offer Christ faithfully, promote growth hopefully, serve others lovingly. Father, as we leave here today, allow us to continue to stay in a state of mind, of worship, and to spread that to others, O oh God. So we ask, Lord, that you give us peace as we turn every situation over to you, and we thank you for all that you are all that you stand for, all that you do in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.